Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to unbox, swatch, and play around with something that was sent to me by the team at Grabby. So it actually comes like pre-wrapped, um, but then it comes in this little cardboard box. And underneath all of this wonderful bubble wrap <laughs> is what they sent to me. Now it was wrapped in plastic before um, I had taken the plastic off just to see. So I have their 36 watercolors. Now these are glitter <clears throat> watercolors. It does have a hinged lid, which is nice. Um, I do like, like, I mean look how thick this pad is. Really thick foam pad in there. So you know your paints are protected. And then you have all the paints here. Um, now there's no color names or numbers or any information that comes with it. Um, so that is one thing I noted. In these little, it's like a, a pretty cheap plastic tray, I'm not going to lie. Um, you have a graphite pencil, I'm assuming. Uh, it doesn't say what kind. You have a watercolor brush. And then they've also sent... Oh, I can get it out of there. Uh, just kind of your garden variety water brush. Pretty decent well size. Um, about a medium tip. Looks like we get an eraser and a sponge. So one thing I do want to note is right here. It is, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys can see that. It's got some fuzzies on my paint. <laughs> I wonder if I could pop these out. Let me see if I can pop it out and see what, what that is. Okay, so I was able to pop it out with an X-Acto knife. Come on, camera. Hello. Right here, focus. <laughs> there we go. Um, I can't tell what that is growing on it. Um, it's scraping off. And this one is pretty cracked, too. Let's go. All right, so <clears throat> that's just something to note there. Um, a few of them are cracked. A few of them, like this one, oh, isn't even sitting in the tray. But this one's really indented, so the amount they fill them with is pretty random, it looks like. You see, like, that one's just sunken in. I mean, this is um, without any color names, pigment information, I'm just going to treat this like I would any other budget set. So I am going to take my spritzer and uh, give them a good old spritz. Uh, we will see how well they activate with the spritz. Um, now one thing I am noticing, like so with standard watercolors, normally when I'm spritzing them, you'll start to see them activating and sometimes they kind of splatter all over your palette. These are not, but I'm starting to see them activate, so <clears throat> that's good. But there we go. We got some spray. So I'm gonna let those sit for a while because they're metallic, glitter um, always takes a little bit longer to activate, and then when I come back I'll have my swatch book. Don't know how I'm gonna really classify these since we don't have names, numbers, or any information. Um, they do say they are saturated and bright. Sun exposure, <laughs> I, I don't know if that just means like it, it's light vest um, or it can be exposed to sun. I'm not really sure what they're trying to say there. Transparent and pure, smooth and smooth. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> yeah, again, I am going into this, treating it like any other budget watercolor and I will be just swatching in my watercolor swatch book which is a Fabriano uh, cold press acid free book. It's not a 100% cotton, but I use this for sketching just because it's, uh, well, it's affordable and watercolors take really well to it. So let's get that going. Okay, I've activated the colors. Let me see if I can slide this over just for a minute. Um, they're coming up nice and thick. I don't know how much water I want to put on them yet because, well, I've never used them, but 
I'm just going to go left to right in the pan. Um, and in fact, I'm going to turn my book this way so that I can swatch each one. And I'll probably just swatch a few on camera with you guys and then do the rest um, as like a speed thing. So they're coming, um, some are activating really well, others are not like this purple. I'm gonna get a little more water on my brush and see if I can get it to move. There we go. All right. I mean, very shimmery, like you're definitely seeing that glitter. And it does move. I always love swatching glitter watercolors just because, let me zoom you in. <laughs> Let's do this one together. I love swatching them because you can just see the glitter, you know, moving around in there. It's for some reason, it's very therapeutic just watching it like glide. I'm just mixing this on my brush. I want you to see. Yeah, it's, it is translucent. You can, you can make it as thick as you want. Now with this Fabriano, it doesn't soak in right away because again, not 100% cotton. So let me see if I can get like a thicker swatch with this next color and less water. Just so you can see how concentrated. I might actually have to use my pipette on these. The spritz is just not wetting them enough. <clears throat> but let's, let's see what I can get out of this one. So that's a little bit of a drier brush. I mean, I am using a silver black velvet brush. Um, they soak up a lot of water. <laughs> so, but I'm trying to dab it off and see. So we'll do one more and then I'm just going to kind of speed it up and then I will just do a little voiceover kind of telling you what I think or like my thoughts as I've been swatching them. So yeah, I will keep on swatching and uh, let you know what I think. So as I'm swatching these out, I do notice that the colors dry quickly, so I have to keep re-wetting them, even though I'm moving pretty quickly. Uh, a couple of the colors were really hard to get to re-wet um, and activate, so I was having trouble using too much or too little water but I started to get the hang of it about halfway through the palette and things started to even out. Um, they do have very similar colors though as I was swatching and the way they line up in the palette, you kind of see that instantly anyways. Um, and the selection of colors isn't too bad. I like all the pinks and purples and greens. I felt the golds and bronzes and like coppery colors were kind of lacking to be honest um, and they were the hardest to swatch believe it or not. Um, I had a really hard time getting those to re-wet and they just did not want to work for me. But overall, I mean it's a pretty good color selection especially if you're looking to add glittery or metallic paints and you don't have any already. So I did some wet on wet play, just kind of seeing how they spread about. Uh, on the first one was more me pushing the color around. Now I'm swatching them as dry as I can with my brush for a concentrated color. And then I kind of did some dotting, but they don't quite move. They just kind of sit there. So keep that in mind if you plan to do wet on wet. Okay, so yeah, like activating these, I wasn't super impressed. Um, they really require a lot of water um, and they dry quickly, but I just kind of wanted to play around and see like what their potential is. Now I'm just using some cheap um, watercolor paper from Arteza. Oh, they're drying out on me already. Come on, colors. Get some more color on my brush. I just kind of want to see what these are capable of doing. But yeah, they dry out quick. Which is fine, um, you know, for adult coloring books because you don't want a ton of water, but if you're painting with them, 
I want them to stay wet a little bit longer. Let's see if we can get a good concentration on there for this one. There we go. Sometimes you just have to play with a paint and figure out its happy space. Let's try this darker green as well. Kind of see if we can get some good effects coming off here. It's not too bad. Of course, they are sweeping the streets, so I apologize for the noise. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I guess must have been their deal with the city that if they were going to construct a school across the street, they had to keep the streets clean. I don't know. They literally are street sweeping all day. <laughs> Quite hilarious. Could you imagine having that job just literally sweeping the same row of street? <laughs> I don't think I could do it. So they're not too bad on this watercolor paper. This is, <clears throat> again, this is Arteza. It is a cheap watercolor paper. <laughs> um, I am just simply using it. Oh, I'm really gonna have to rewet this one. I'm trying to get like this pretty little pink color. Come on. <laughs> Um, I'm just using it because, well, I don't want to put something I'm testing out in like my etcher or something. <laughs> so, I mean, you got to keep in mind, I am using a cheap watercolor paper, so kind of have to forgive. I mean, that's a little too concentrated for my, my taste, but that's kind of what it needs. Let's see, can't, just want to try a few, let's try this, like, yeah, they're all dry. They dry really quick and then take a little while to reabsorb. Um, yeah, the colors are okay. I, I wouldn't say I was like super impressed with them um, <clears throat> while I'm waiting for that one to reactivate. I, I did see, oh, come on, Street Sweeper. The uh, colors are really close to one another. I mean, all these pinks, especially these two, uh, are awfully close. All these purples here are really close as well. Um, you know, it's nice. You can see some separation in the glitter. Uh, I really struggled to get my golds to activate. Um, so I don't know. I did test it with them dry, but I don't paint dry. Um, I paint loose florals, <laughs> so like this isn't even in a, an adult coloring book. It would work for me. Um, I did try some wet on wet. They did not really bloom um, much, but <clears throat> you know you, you got to keep in mind everything kind of blooms at its own little style. So I'm not really too worried on that one. Making a little doodad here. Whoops. My brush is getting dry. I know the paints shimmer more with the dry. Now these would probably look excellent on some black watercolor paper. But I don't have some to show you guys. Oh, I really need to turn my page, but I can't. Let's make a little turquoise palm tree. Let's try grabbing, <clears throat> um, try to think of a, we can try and activate this bronze and just create some little coconuts in there. Of course it's still wet, so. <laughs> it could make a muddy mess. Yep, they're gonna mingle. They're gonna mingle, but that's okay. I'm just trying to play around and have some fun. Um, let me try, let's try this other, let's try this darker green. Actually, we're making an unrealistic little thing here, so who cares, right? Let's try this purple. I just kinda wanna see like, what it creates. 
I mean, this one separates really well. I really like how that one plays around. But the problem is, is like, say I add water to my brush, it just whoops. And the paper is part of it, but see, it just really washes out. <clears throat> so that's the only thing. And the light green, I don't even think this light green will show. I mean, I barely see it, so there's probably not a chance that you guys are going to see it. Let's see if we can dab some of this. Um... I don't think it's black. It's like a charcoal gray. I mean, it has to be. I just want to see. Let's take that. Dry off my brush and grab some of it. By, way, by the way, this is not a water credible lesson. I'm just screwing around with these. Because I really like the shimmer off of them. It's just... Um, I definitely have to have my brush a lot drier than I prefer uh, to get the colors. Yeah, like, I mean, that has water on it. And say I went to go, you know, water it down even more. This is Arteza, so it doesn't soak in <laughs> very well. But yeah, you, you definitely have to keep these pretty dry. Whereas my Paul Rubens, I, I don't have to be that dry and I'll get I'll get pretty good color <clears throat> so yeah I mean from a watercolor standpoint you would not be able to do the loosey-goosey that I really enjoy doing like because as I water this down for the value it's well it's not just it's gonna look like that <laughs> and it still has some sparkle now on black again on black paper this would probably look way better but <clears throat> um, yeah when they're dry like this then you get a nice little shimmer shimmer so in an adult coloring book I'm moving that out of the way in an adult coloring book these would be great um, because you can't or you don't want to use a lot of water now last observation um, I have a lot of pitting in these colors so let me zoom you in so you can see see that one there um, it just straight collapsed in on me this one's collapsing. This is the one that was kind of underfilled to begin with and it's going down. So a lot of pitting, but is that a big deal considering these are like a budget watercolor? Not really. Um, now if I got, or if I paid for like Paul Rubens, um, I would get a little crabby cause they cost more. Now I would get really crabby if it was like a Daniel Smith or Schminka doing that, <laughs> but you know, like I said, there's no color names, there's no color numbers, and so that's just something to keep in mind. So what do I think of this set? Like, is it a good set to try out? Um, you do have to wait a while for shipping, here in the U.S. at least, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is, um, what are you using them for? Like, if you're a beginner and you're just looking for an all-around metallic set to accent, like, your adult coloring books... This would probably be a really good set, but if you're going to start getting into like actual watercolor and painting, um, I I probably wouldn't use these just because I, I don't have the pigment info. Um, I don't know what they used to make these and because they need to be so concentrated, it's more, it's going to be better in like an adult coloring book than on my watercolor paper in my opinion. So yeah, if you have the grabbies or um, you've already tried them and you know, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. I will leave a link in the description below if you want to check them out. And until next time guys, take care. Bye now.